You say, how in the world can you say that, Brother Mickey? You're a human being. You're, you're a man. You're a sinner. I was a sinner. But when God looks at me through the blood of Jesus Christ, all God sees in me is Jesus. Why? Because I'm in Christ and Christ is in me. And when God looks at me, He sees me as righteous as Jesus Christ is righteous. Why? One and only reason. Because my faith and trust is in Him. Not in anything else. Not in any man-made doctrine. Not in a certain verse of Scripture. My faith and trust is in Him. And only in Him can we live and move and have our being. Only in Him can we have the promise of eternal life in a beautiful place called heaven. You want to be righteous? Confess your sins. He says He'll forgive them. Cleanse you of all unrighteousness so that you become righteous in the eyes of God. And by the way, there's only one cleansing agent in all of God's economy. There's only one thing that cleanses from sin. Guess what that is? The blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son. Every time we come together to observe the Lord's Supper, as we would be doing again the last Sunday of this month, being a fifth Sunday. Every time we come together to observe the Lord's Supper, we quote a verse from 1 John 1, 7 that says, If we walk in the light as He is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, His Son, cleanseth us from all sin. Not one sin, not two sins, not a dozen sins, all sin. There again, you're cleansed through the blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son. That's why to me it's an abomination for some so-called Christian to stand and say, we need to quit preaching the blood. We need to take the blood out of our hymn books. The blood is repulsive to people. I don't care. The Bible says without shedding of blood, there's no remission. What does that mean? It means if the blood of Jesus Christ is not applied to your heart, there is no way that you can be forgiven of your sin. The only cleansing agent God ever ordained for sin is the blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son. Thank God for the blood. I'll preach the blood as long as God gives me breath to preach it. And I'll not apologize. It invokes God's cleansing. But finally, revival also invokes God's control. God's control. Then will I hear from, from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Will heal their land. When God heals the land, God once again is in control. Let me ask you a question. How many of you believe God's in control of our nation right now? I mean from a human standpoint. Now from a spiritual standpoint, I know God's always in control. But from a human standpoint, how many of you believe God is in control of the majority of our leaders and the majority of our people in our nation today? No way. You can see it obviously from the empty pews in churches all across the land. You can see it in the way people talk out in public, even on television. I know I shouldn't say this and probably get in trouble, but I care less. It's amazing to me. I saw a man running for the president of the United States of America that bragged about his husband being there to support him. I never would have believed that could happen in the United States of America. Growing up as a little preacher's kid in Baptist churches all across West Texas, I could have never believed I'd ever heard that with my ears in our nation. God help us. God help us. I'm telling you, the only answer, folks, is revival. The answer is revival. And I wonder how bad many of us really want revival. Do we really want to see revival? 
Vivian, please come to the organ. Begin to play. As Vivian begins to play the organ, we're going to do something different this morning. Something I've never done in this church. We're simply going to have an altar call for prayer. If we're, going to, if we're going to be serious about revival, we need to obey what God says that brings it about. And the first item on the agenda is to humble ourselves and pray. And I know many of you are past the ability to get down on your knees in the altar. If you're not past that ability, I'd invite you to join me on your knees in the altar. And if you can't get down on your knees, maybe you can just come down and stand in the altar or sit on the front pew and pray and believe God to bring revival once again to our nation. And it could begin right here at Bruceville Baptist Church. Let's stand together. And as you stand, if God leads you, and I believe with all of my heart God will lead you because if we're going to be obedient to God, we need to do what God says. And that's to humble ourselves and pray and seek His face and turn from our wicked ways so that God will hear from heaven and forgive our sin and heal our land and bring revival. Again, I ask you, if you can get on your knees in the altar, join me there on your knees, that's fine. If you can't, find a place on the front pew and sit down. Find a place in the altar just to stand and say, God, I'm here presenting myself as a living sacrifice. I want to see revival, God. I want to see revival come to Bruceville Baptist Church. I want to see revival come to our community. I want to see revival to come to our county. I want to see revival to come to our nation. God, we've got to have revival. The only means of survival is revival. God, please bring about a revival and start it in me. Start it in every one of us that are on our knees, that are praying here today. God, begin a revival right here. Right now.